Welcome back, everyone. I am here again with Julie E. She's an expert in holistic health and nutrition. She's a registered dietitian and she practices functional medicine. She's been doing it for over 30 years in New York and Los Angeles. She is an author and she has created the Stretch Ball product. And she's here with us today. She's going to be talking with us uh, about nutrition and pain management. We also have Patty as well. And uh, would you guys like to say hello? Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. All right. So I'm going to start. Uh, Julie, can you tell me what is nutrition? I know it's used a lot. People talk a lot about nutrition. But what is it? That's a great question. Um, the word nutrition is really popular today, but when I started studying and reading about nutrition, I think I was the only one that knew the word. Um, it's been quite a while. Um, so really, nutrition is your body. It's who you are. It's what you are. Your cells, you are made up of cells. Your cells work by having vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytonutrients going in and out of them, doing all kinds of jobs all day long. And that's really what it's all about. It's down to the cellular level of what's going on in your body. I can keep talking. Um, there's a lot. I mean, I can go on about nutrition for hours and days. Um, you know, I think people talk about the word nutrition. They'll say, you know, I do nutrition. And, you know, they're taking bodybuilding supplements. And other people are like, I do nutrition. And they're dieting. And it's kind of used in a lot of ways today that is a little funny to me and maybe the media is doing that to us um, but I really look at it as you are what you eat you are what you put on your skin and what you wear on your body it's that's you and that's your nutrition you know? Boy, do I concur when I was back in my hippie days um, I that was the big slogan you are what you eat and that I was I was in my you know teenage years and so it was it just stuck in there and so, you know, it, it, but that, it was such a great, if people could just capture that, because, you know, it did, and it changed my life forever. I was a, a vegan at 14. Wow. Um, not that that was necessarily the right thing, but, it, but um, you know, I really felt like I wanted to be close to the earth, you know, being a hippie and right. ate, ate all plant-based well, some people become vegan because of the health benefits, and other people, I have a friend that is a vegan because she doesn't like what raising animals does to the yes. ecosystem. Right. So it's it's interesting when you go back to that word nutrition, and you know, some people it could be a vegan, some people are eating keto or paleo or dieting or starving or, you mm -hmm. know, binging and purging. You know, these days we use the umbrella word of nutrition for all of that. And, yes. you know, it's it really is all of that. It is your vitamins, your supplements. I don't know. I don't think I would call Starbucks nutrition. It would be the opposite. <laughs> you know, if we were looking for an antonym. Maybe for the college kids. But. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's a lot of synonyms really out there with nutrition or words that fall under the umbrella, I should say. And it's, it's really... You know, they use the term now, how is your nutrition is kind of what people ask these days. And I think it's like, how do you do? Like, how are you good? Are you a crappy eater? Are you a medium healthy eater? You know, I guess it's almost used in that respect a little bit like the word health or healthy. Yeah. You know, do you try to be healthy? Do you try to have good nutrition? So is there is there a healthy diet? I mean, is there anything in particular we're supposed to eat? Does it differ for each individual person? How do you determine that? How does it work? Um, that's a really good question, and on average, I would say it really should be about the same for each person. We should eat mostly vegetarian. We should eat a ton of fruits and vegetables, right? We should eat close to the earth. That's that. Um, Non-GMO, organic, healthy food. We should have some protein, and some days it's good to be animal protein, and other days it might be great to be hemp or vegetable protein. Um, we could have some cooked food, but we should definitely have some raw. So, and we also really need the, the really, really, really important things that most people are actually missing is salt and oil. And we need so much salt, so much more than you think, because years ago they cut salt out. They were like, not, you know, low sodium, no salt, do it this way. And then people started having digestive problems. 
you cannot digest food unless you have salt in your body. Your adrenals will not work correctly unless you have salt. So we absolutely need salt. The more you sweat, the more salt you need. And if you lick your sweat and it doesn't taste salty, you need more. Um, we also need oil. Our, you know, every um, government type of agency, which I usually rarely ever refer to, but all the American Heart Association, the American Medical Association, everybody says about 30% of your diet coming from fat. So how come if we're given the opportunity to have one third of our diet be fat, no one does it? I don't understand. <laughs> no one wants to be fat. Right? Like everyone, so what people do is they don't eat the good fats and then they binge on the crappy fats. So, and then everyone goes, but I eat an avocado every day, <laughs> especially if you live in California, but that's not it, you know? The get out of jail free card. Well, for, for those who don't know, avocados are filled with good fat. <laughs> right. An avocado really is 100% fat and it is good fat. But if you're having gallbladder issues, an avocado doesn't work for you. It actually works against you. So if you're having issues with sleep and you eat avocados like they're going out of style, you might try to cut those out for a few days and see what happens. In that case, coconut oil and MCT oil, which is super popular right now, and you can find it in many stores, that, that fat actually bypasses the gallbladder. But fat is important for your brain. It's important for your joints. It's super important for your nervous system. And it's important to keep inflammation down. So the average person today is frazzled and stressed out. And if you were thinking that you're getting enough fat in your diet and you're frazzled, I'm going to challenge you to eat three teaspoons of oil right off the spoon. Um, your synapses and your nerves, if we want to go scientific for a minute, that you, know, you want something to happen, your body has to send a nerve or a synapse through your body. Those are all like the, if you take a wire, like your phone charger, for example, the outside of it is plastic and underneath it is these electrical wires, right? So the synapses and the nerves are like the electrical stuff, but I know right now I have a phone charger that all the plastic wore away on and it's not working and it's messing up my phone every time I use that one and I know I need to get a new one. So I don't use that one anymore because it messes up my phone. If your body doesn't have oil, it's going to mess up your nerves. So the plastic coating on the wires is like oil in your diet. So we need oil in order for our nervous system to work correctly. And I know you cook with olive oil and you use coconut oil to cook with or whatever it is, but I'm telling you, you're not getting enough. I have people take three to five teaspoons of oil by mouth on a spoon on a regular basis and that can chill out your nervous system. So. We need more vegetables, some protein, and fat, and salt. So on the oil, it's really important to have a cold-pressed raw oil. Yes. Right? And not a processed oil like canola or, you know, Great safflower or, yes. or whatever. It's more important to have ones that are... Um, uh, like extra virgin olive yes. oil. Yes. And um, cold, like you said, raw cold pressed and also an important fact about oil is it needs to be in a dark bottle so a lot of oils that you can buy typically are in clear bottles I can think of at least four off the top of my head at big stores or big brands that people are using always in a clear bottle light oxidizes the oil so when you if you use oil from a clear bottle it's actually creating more harm than good it's creating a ton of oxidation so it's making you age or rust so dark bottle and I recommend you know you don't have to know all of these and memorize them it's not a quiz but omega-369 and we need lignans lignans and you know coconut oil so we need all of those the full spectrum is what's going to make people feel better at Plant Life, we carry a lot of carrier oils, and carrier oils are mainly used for uh, um, to put essential oils into and spread on instead of just putting essential oils directly on the body. So it's a carrier to carry the essential oil into the skin. So we have quite a few of them, about probably 15, 20 different carrier oils, wow. but everything's in dark amber Great. for the reason that you mentioned. Excellent. Um, yeah. Good yeah, to yeah. hear. So it's always sad to me when such a great product is in a clear bottle. Um, and I do love I, some of the carrier oils that you use. I have people use topically all the time. Coconut oil, almond oil, mm -hmm. and castor oil are super therapeutic for the body. They don't give you the calories and the fat, per se, that we're looking for in terms of your diet, but they definitely add to having 
the right omega whatever number it is and the right and getting some of those properties into your body well even to take it one step further for skincare um, you know you have to have those essential fatty acids for healthy skin and so like we saw evening primrose and rosehip oil which are loaded with all those great great oils to put on your skin and keep your skin healthy from an external but taking it internally the people with the most beautiful skin and you go to any country where they they have a high oil intake um, like Spain or, or um, Italy or wherever mainly here and I think it was a whole ploy on a diet a long time ago about the fat-free diet if you remember yes of course. Um, <laughs> you know to get fat out of the diet and, and people took it literally but you go anywhere where they have a high fat diet and their skin is absolutely beautiful. They don't have all the issues with joint aches and pains and you know, and I'm exactly. sure you'll we'll cover that a little bit later, but. Yeah, um, so oils are super, super important and underrated. Let's talk about, go back to salt a minute because um, you know, the average person doesn't know How a much? lot about salt and you know, what type of salt to, to right. eat. Right, so. Table salt is white, right? We've mm -hmm. all seen it at the restaurants. In order to get it like that, first they bleach it, and then they add another chemical to make it not stick together. So table mm. salt is like double toxicity. And so I'm never, ever referring to table salt. <laughs> um, I'm not even referring to iodized salt. Once in a while, someone might need that for a specific cause, but I'm generally referring to air-dried Celtic sea salt and sometimes Himalayan salt. And the salt that I use in my office that I reference and put people on is peach in color. It, it's natural and it was air dried. I know your products are air dried also, which is amazing. Yeah, ours, our salts, our bath salts, the salt is, itself is, um, it's hand raked and it comes from water that has no herbicides or pesticides. Excellent. So the salt is very pure, unlike Dead Sea salt. I won't right. go there on that, but um, it's hand raked and hand ground, so no metal touches it, which, change, which changes the composition. And it has over 84 trace minerals in it. And it's the, the, the type of processing is called Celtic. So you referred to Celtic. Okay. So it's a, that is what we use in our, our products great and it's a great salt to eat as well yeah and so we need to eat salt but I do love referring people to soak in salt and so you can also get a lot of the properties and benefits of the salt by soaking we just need to get hydrated mostly so if you, th you look at someone and their skin is really dehydrated if their tongue sticks together and they sound dehydrated <laughs> you know a lot of people think oh I don't drink enough water but or I drink so much water how come I'm still dehydrated it's rarely just water I think the average person probably gets close to or enough water but because we're all conscious of it but we need salt and the electrolytes so Na and Cl are two electrolytes and there's actually a an action that happens in every one of your cells and sodium takes nutrients in and chloride and potassium take toxins out so if you don't have enough salt in your body you can't do this basic pump that goes on or should go on every single day and also when food hits your stomach your stomach is supposed to secrete HCL if you have adequate HCL you will never get a parasite you will never get food poisoning and you will digest your food really well but most people don't have enough HCL for two reasons. One is people, so the CL comes from salt, right? Mm -hmm. NaCl, and then you make HCL. H is hydrogen, which is ubiquitous and abundant. It's everywhere, so we're never really worried about that. You have to take in the table salt to make this enzyme. And it's an enzyme, so your body produces it through having amino acids. That's how you make enzymes. So if someone's deficient in amino acids, they might not make it. Mm -hmm. And then the third reason is traumas to the head. The head and the pubic bone and tailbone are the two most problematic areas in your body to have an injury because there are these energy channels called meridians that run through your body. And when you get a trauma to your head, like anyone that's had a nose job or gotten hit in the head by a baseball or smacked their head playing a sport or gymnastics or something, often that reflexes to you and weakens and shuts down the stomach. 
So over the course of the next 5 or 10 or 15 years, that person uses up all their HCL and stops producing more, mm -hmm. especially because by then most people are cutting salt out of their diet. So it's a stomach and digestion nightmare, and the rule, you know, the scientific, whether it's a rule of thumb or something that we know of to be true, is over the age of 50, we assume poor digestion. Because, but I have seen poor digestion at 25 and at 30 and at 40 also. And it's one of the main reasons is traumas to the head and what that does to the stomach. And, you know, the follow-up part of that or like the icing on the top is really just not having enough HCL. So we need salt badly. And don't let your doctor tell you you have high blood pressure or heart disease and you can't have salt. You know, you're probably healthier than your doctor would be my guess. And if you start taking salt in, you definitely will be. You know, so whether you soak in it or eat it. What causes um, swelling? Because a lot of people um, stay away from salt because they think it makes them retain water. Right. Well, that's, that's a great question because I would say that less than 1% that's of the time, that's the cause. But carbohydrates make you retain. One gram of carbohydrates will make you retain three grams of water. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not digesting your food well and you take in carbohydrates, you are probably going to be bloated and retain water. And to me, that's more problematic than the salt issue. Um, and then to go back to the head trauma, some t and the head trauma and poor digestion leads to people having parasites and f bacteria that might or might not lead to food poisoning, that stuff doesn't just get out of your body. It now embeds itself somewhere in your body depending on what else is going on in your today body and your life that day. You get kicked when you're down. So if your body is stressed on the right side, those bacteria are gonna probably embed themselves and bury themselves and make themselves a nice little nest in your pancreas or you know your right part of your colon and then you end up with parasites. And so when people have parasites, especially in the pancreas, or a deficiency of CoQ10, which the, par the pancreas needs a ton of to work correctly, you can also get bloated because now you're not digesting your food well. Yeah, so that's a great question. So it's rarely the salt. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're eating canned food and you're eating a ton of processed food, you're getting way too much sodium. But that's not the healthy salt. That's right. a different topic. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah, we need natural salt. Yeah. So another question for you here. What about the fads out there? So, for instance, kombucha and protein shakes. Are they good for you, or what is, what is the truth behind those? Well, when you ask if they're good for you, I'm going to say kombucha is not good for me, but it might be good for you. Um, I know I call it your today body. And so you have what's going on in my world today, right? Am I planning a wedding or a party and or training for a triathlon or am I going through a divorce or did I just lose a loved one so I'm stressed out and emotional? So your emotional state completely affects your health. And if you're totally stressed out, you don't need certain things that when you're healthy and relaxed and happy, you can eat. So you have to always assess a little bit. It's like a balancing your checkbook, right? Like, where am I today and what do I need and should I get in a little protein or not? You know, you kind of just have to take a little scan of what's going on in my life. And so that's number one. There's individual variation based on your today body. Then, of course, there's genetics and there's your nationality, like, Asians don't do well with dairy like it's a known fact like they don't have enzymes to break things down you know an, other other nationalities have their things right it's a little bit of your culture and what your cells where they came from originally right what but we can change genetic potential through nutrition so you can change all of that unless you pollute your body and now it's not going to work as well and now you're only changing it for the worse right if you're working on your health you can improve and change what some of your genetic predisposition is. But, you know, so to answer your actual question, you know, I know that people that have yeast or yeast tendencies don't do well with kombucha because it's really like a fungus, right? Um, they also don't do well with a lot of carbohydrates. But if you, this, you take the same person and you kill off the yeast and you get rid of the heavy metals because you have to do this, them both at the same time, and you have to have enough CoQ10 in your body in order to make that process happen correctly, then that person will do better once the yeast is out of their body with 
something like kombucha or carbohydrates. So, you know, I always answer questions with a little bit of a depends on that day and your body. But you know, the today the paleo diet, the keto diet, you know, fasting, juicing, you know, all of those absolutely have benefits. And I'm not going to be able to tell on just a podcast which one you should do and which one you should do now because it just depends on what's going on. You know, I I this year I was a total vegan for 3 months and a complete carnivore for the next four. So it really just depends on what you're doing in your life. Like, I, you know, I listen to my body and I go through phases and it, whether or not it's an emotional thing or a travel thing, but eating clean and eating nutrients that your body actually needs to function is the most important thing. So I like to give the visual of a car, right? You, wouldn't, you couldn't start a car without an alternator or a starter, right? You wouldn't drive a car without oil in the engine because you would probably burn it out fast. You definitely need spark plugs and hoses for the car to work correctly. And regularly, you have to fill it up with gas. So your body needs, just like spark plugs and hoses, it needs vitamins, minerals, and nutrients and phytonutrients and antioxidants and then you have to put calories in regularly because you use them just like the gas in a car so if you're putting in doritos and pizza and ice cream those aren't nutrients and that's not necessarily going to help the car run better it might be calories to keep the car going but it might be burning out the engine right and so you have to decide do I want to age fast and rust or you know do I want to keep going or do I want to find a happy balance that I can live with you know and I always life is a seesaw there's no way around it you know 20 years ago in my practice they used to tell people we can heal this and you'll never have a problem ever again that is not true okay now I'm a little bit more experienced and I know that there's ups and downs every single day and every single month no one is exempt Everyone has stuff and, if I can curse, shit in their life and problems and, you know, just when everything's totally perfect, there's a hurricane or a fire or a loved one passes away. So there's really almost, right, never a dull moment. So you have to figure out what can I live with and what can I do to balance out the harm that I do or the bad that I do. So if I'm going to have... If I'm going to have um, Doritos, I don't, I don't know why I always use that example, but um, if I was going to have Doritos, I might balance it out with a green drink. You know, today I would never recommend Doritos because another company makes a better and a healthier one that's high in protein, so there's no reason to ever eat a Dorito again when you can have a Beanfields chip. But, um, you know, really, like, so Doritos, out the door. But if you're going to go out to your favorite restaurant and you know they have the best cream pie or chocolate pudding or whatever your favorite thing is, right? I like cheesecake. So I'm going to save room in my calorie and fat budget that day for the cheesecake. And because I'm going to have the cheesecake, I'm going to eat lighter at that meal. You know, the cheesecake is going to be fat and sugar, right? So I'm going to have a more protein and vegetable meal. I'm not going to have carbs at that meal. And I'm going to balance it out. And if I didn't feel good the next day, I would probably not eat carbs the first half of the next day, and I would, might boost up my digestion support the day before I eat the cheesecake and or the morning after, right? So that's how I recommend people can live on this planet and enjoy life and just be. And when you're in a phase where you're like, I want to get cut and lean and ripped, or I have a wedding, or I have to wear this dress, or I got a photo thing happening and I want to look good, then you might go a little extreme for a couple of days. But I know that when people go extreme, they do the opposite after. They binge. So I still believe that if you can keep your spark plugs renewed every so often, flush out your oil every 3,000 miles like in your body like you do with your car, and just put nutrients in, you know, replace the hoses every so often, you're going to function and live better longer and feel better right so to me that's the healthy diet that is a great analogy i love 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 that (laughs) thank you i'll remember that one (laughs) good (laughs) and i think you know because we all get over marketed to on all these fade diet fad diets and all this stuff and people just don't know and you know they 
they like who do you believe do you believe the fda do you believe you know your doctor do you believe you know who you know marketing on you know a particular brand packaging what do you do and julie i was going to ask you what um is there can you over supplement and over uh do on taking too many supplements or too much stuff too much you think you're doing good and you're over nutritioning yes yes i would say that the answer to that is definitely a yes because the average person has a cupboard full of stuff because they read this one does this and this one burns fat and this one makes energy and this one makes you sleep and this one makes you poop and this one <laughs> makes your skin good you know so people are definitely just like taking a whole bunch of stuff and it, so that's one thing, right? There's, there's interactions and interferences, possibly. Some of them may interfere with something else. Uh, a silly example is like taking too much grapefruit. Even eating too much grapefruit actually exponentially affects pharmaceuticals. So if someone's eating a lot of grapefruit, who would think you could eat too much grapefruit, and they take an antibiotic or a sleep medicine, they could actually get into trouble, right? Um, I, right and then, so that's one thing is like, it's better to have an organized plan, and that's why I like working with people and making sure I know exactly what they're taking. And we have, ev just like food, we have like everyday supplements, and then maybe we have some travel supplements or some medicine chest remedy supplements that we use sometimes to fill in some gaps or holes. You're traveling and you don't have enough time to eat enough protein, right? You eat a lot more snacks that day. Maybe you do have an amino acid supplement or something else that day to support. That's what it was called, a supplement, mm -hmm. right? But in our society, sadly, we do need supplements. We definitely need them. We cannot get enough nutrition, no matter, I am a nutritionist and I practice what I preach and I eat cleaner and healthier than anyone I've ever met and I don't get enough nutrition in my food. So the, the study that I heard a while ago was that if you wanted to get the nutrition from one, the vitamin A from one peach that was available in 1970, you would have to eat 26 peaches today. Yeah, so I, I believe I don't that. think anyone's eating 26 yeah, our peaches. Soil is or, depleted. Right, or, so, yeah. exactly. So our soil is depleted and it's, there's chemicals in the soil and the soil is live, so it's fighting the chemicals and using up a lot of its nutrition to deal with that. So there's not as much left in the food. So we definitely need supplements, but you know, just like the difference between do you buy the 99 cent mascara or the $10 mascara or the $30 mascara, there's a difference in supplements. And I'm a fan of using only products that from conception to consumption are clean. So and what does clean mean to you? Clean means that they're free of fillers. So when it was from conception, so the idea of it, so let's say there was basil, right? So where the basil is grown, there's no groundwater contamination. The soil is clean. It's non-GMO, right? It's organically grown, not just the soil, but also the water. Right. And then when they, they pick the basil at peak ripeness rather than three months earlier than when it has, and then trying to like ripen it in a lab, Right, so it's picked at peak ripeness. And then the way that the basil is dried and or, I mean, I have to use a quote unquote process right. to get it into a capsule or an essential oil. Like mm -hmm. that process, like is it toxic? Like mm -hmm. what do they have to do to make it, to get it in there? Mm -hmm. So what, like for example, um, and one of the supplements that I use, the capsules, so a capsule itself in order to close the two sides, they have to use talc which is a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. So that's why people say, well, I don't use capsules because I heard they were toxic. They are. But one of the companies whose products I use, they only run their encapsulator at 80% efficiency, mm -hmm. and they can do it without talc. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is the kind of company I like to align myself with, and I feel comfortable using their products. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I like Plant Life, because I know that from beginning to end, you guys are yes, clean. absolutely. Yeah. Whereas, go ahead. Um, so in in supplements, um, is there? I, I don't want to you to put you on the spot with a brand, but I'm very pro plant based supplements, not chemical based supplements. So most of the supplements on the market today are all chemicals or synthetics. Is that correct? Or? A lot of them are yes. And I was going to get into like the ones that you can buy generally at like GNC mm -hmm. are usually they have way more other ingredients on the list and they're way right. more fake and 
You know, they have starches and fillers and sugars in there, and they're way more toxic. And so I don't, so when I started to talk about supplements, I didn't get into, you know, to over supplement. I didn't get into the bodybuilding supplements because mm-hmm. I worked in sports nutrition, was my very first nutrition job, and I helped bodybuilders. And they, this was like the only snack bar out there was the power bar. We didn't have a whole line at the supermarket. No. <laughs> Now there's, a, a now, I mean, I ate power bars. They tasted like cardboard, but I ate them because it was the only thing that was there, you know? Now we have like three or 500 choices. So, but now the products, the supplements, the capsules that people are throwing down and the tablets, like a lot of them are so toxic and so laden with bad things that, yeah, they're, then you're definitely over supplementing. You're having a potential short term benefit because it might do some good but with a long-term detriment. We call it toxic tagalongs. So if it dissolves and breaks down, and I use the visual in my mind of Alka-Seltzer, like it slowly disintegrates into liquid, right? So if a supplement is somewhat good quality, it will do that, and then it goes to get into your cell. But if it takes toxic tagalongs with it into your cell, you're now doing DNA damage and some people might not care about that because they're not thinking about you know DNA, but it does harm to your cells, and then your cells divide and replicate, and now you have potential for cancer and autoimmune and all kinds of weird problems. Um, so one little thing that's kind of a fun science experiment that you could do is take your supplements and put them in a bowl of vinegar. So vinegar is acidic, kind of like your stomach is and should be, and you cover it and you might stare at it and watch it for a few minutes at first and see what happens and then come back to it later and for six or seven or ten days. I actually put a couple of supplements in that didn't dissolve at all and looked exactly the same two weeks later. Oh. So if you wonder why you have a stomach ache and you take all those supplements, like that stuff is just like sitting in there like rotting and well, and, and creating that's what's problems. so sad is that people think they're doing good by, you know, down in that, that you know, multivitamin that they bought at Costco and, and you know, not to you know, And even sometimes Whole Foods. Yeah, though, or Whole or Foods. GNC or GNC or the vitamin Amazon shop or, or whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. It's, it doesn't matter. And um, I here um, we make soap. We manufacture one of the products we manufacture is soap. And so the, the C- city of San Clemente Water Department came in and was talking to us all about, you know, what we were putting down the drain because they thought we were hurting it, but we're all biodegradable and we're right. clean, you know, so they, it wasn't, it wasn't us. And, um, but anyway, in getting to know the city of San Clemente um, Water Department, they said their number one issue is um, collecting all the supplements that come out through the sewer or the toilets and the, wow. and they're full, fully engaged supplements that have not dissolved. I am not surprised. <laughs> so I, I'm slightly surprised, here, but not surprised yeah, at the same time. They never break down, yeah. and they don't break down with solvents either, a so, lot of them. So that, that's what they were telling me, that they it's a really big issue for them. Wow. So this was a few years back when we moved to St. Clemente, but uh, I'm sure it's probably still the case. Oh, it's but probably worse people, now. People, you know, it goes in, and it doesn't get broken down. It goes right on out, and they people think they're... They're wasting their money. Right. Well, that's it's sad at that moment because people get faked into buying stuff or hearing that it's good all again because of money and dollars and who's got money to put an ad somewhere. Right. You know, um, you know, if I wanted to promote a product that I love, I might just need fifty thousand dollars to put an ad somewhere. But I don't do that, and I explain. I spend more time with people, and I talk to them, and this is what this does, and this is how it works, and I use as many plant-based supplements as possible and organic and clean in all their processing unless there's a condition that someone has that I can't find one for. So for a short time, I'm using a Band-Aid remedy of something else just to alleviate something Mm -hmm. so that then the nutrients will work or the oils or whatever I'm doing with them because healing is a slower process, right? Like you take a pharmaceutical, your problem's gone in like two minutes. You take, you know, you spend $50 on herbs and nutrients and eating healthy and you still have constipation. People right. get frustrated yes. or you still have a headache. So there, people are like, I'm doing everything right and it's still not working. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that actually have genetic predisposition or 
some totally bizarre random health problem that would make that person do everything right in terms of our good nutrition with our quote marks and our healthy and yet they're still not getting their results and two scenarios that I can even just tell you about one is a guy that had too high in sulfur in his body so mm. broccoli made him worse broccoli made him have and he didn't know that it was it was deducted by a practitioner that ended up looking into like are you taking in too much sulfur like it takes a creative person to think about something like that because he's bathing in you know Epsom salts and he's eating broccoli like it's going out of style thinking it's going to help him heal and it's completely the wrong thing for that person yes and 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 you know like what you talked about earlier about every body is different right. and everybody has a different need based on today I think what was your, your well it's your today body your today body yeah I love that your today body but um, how do you um, beside how would you determine who to go to to you know like I think holistic is key I only go to a holistic doctor I think I said that before but um, how do you find one? How do you find a one? You know, <laughs> right. I know you're up in LA, and we're going to give your website and your information at the end of the podcast. But how do you find one? Right, and I do. I've worked with people in other countries and other states. There's Skype and FaceTime today, so there's a lot of good things you can do wherever you are. So I can definitely help people anywhere. Um, how do you find one? Is probably you know the hardest question to answer. You know, there's a an organization called the Life Extension Foundation, and there are medical doctors that are knowledgeable that you can get through that system. I'm not saying they're holistic, but they're advanced in their medicine enough to know to look for weird, bizarre things and to do advanced medical testing. So that's out there. Um, I work... I was originally trained in something called QRA, which is quantum reflex analysis, and there is a list of QRA practitioners. They're not all equal, mm -hmm. as neither are all, you know, massage therapists are different across the board, right? right? So it's a little bit of trial and error or asking a friend. I don't advertise at all. I only get referrals mm -hmm. from people I've met or from doing right. interviews like this. So. Um, often it's the quieter ones that are the better ones, right? We don't yes. spend money on advertising. Like, yes. like you know, just like we described about food companies, the ones that have the most money and spend the most on advertising usually are the least healthy. Yes, so yes, it's, yes, yes. It's, you have to just ask around. I often recommend asking at yoga studios, massage places, Pilates studios. There's definitely going to be someone in the world of that studio that people can refer you to and you can start to, sometimes they have Bolton boards with postcards or business cards. Raw food restaurants and healthy, you know, organic clean restaurants often are good reference places, I yeah. think. And then you ask, you want to ask, you want to hear from someone else that already went yes, generally exactly. and get a little feedback. I do an energy test, which QRA is, um, it's quantum reflex analysis. So somebody might have a headache, but the problem is because of a tailbone injury. So it's a reflex from the tailbone to the head. So that's where that comes from. And it's an energy test. Some people might call it muscle testing or applied kinesiology. It's been around for years and years and years. It is a non-invasive test where we can touch your body, you can touch your body, and I can detect where there's energy and where there isn't energy. And then I can also create a healing plan for it. So I've been practicing that for almost 20 years, and I've advanced it. I can clear something out of someone's body. If I find a parasite or a bacteria, I can get it out in four minutes, um, whereas not everyone has that skill, per se. But that type of a healer, someone that does that, or live blood analysis, or someone do that does lab tests that your doctor can't order, those are the places I usually suggest you go, because... Doctors could order all these tests, but they don't know about them. Right. Right? So when I order a stool test and I find parasites or fungus or a food allergy for someone, your doctor would have never suggested that test because right. your insurance might not pay for it and all of that. Right. So that's how I usually refer you to find a practitioner is yeah. ask around, look for someone that does some weird energy testing or different kinds of lab testing. Well, for the listener that doesn't understand what holistic means, that's what, it's the whole body. A lot of doctors these days are very specialized, and they only 
cater to one thing. Um, right. So they and their their even the tests that they do or they call for blood tests whatever are very specialized and pinpointed to one thing. But a holistic practitioner looks at the whole body and the whole reason for whatever is going wrong. Right. So we have cardio specialists, we have kidney specialists, we have, you know, everyone's got their little thing and they their niche and they spend 10 or 15 minutes with you and they see like 300 people a week. I see less than 30 people a week and I spend an hour to two hours with them and I get into it with them and I get to know them and that is the kind of healer you want. Someone that actually takes the time to think and figure out what's going on with your body And I look at the body for all of your emotional traumas and all of your physical traumas from the time you were brought onto this planet up until today. So potentially a falling out of your crib when you were one is the reason for your headaches or your infertility when you're 40. And that is a definite possibility. All of your traumas over the course of your life dictate who you are and from each trauma there's potentially an energy blockage. So I'm gonna give you a visual to understand that one since you like my visuals. Um, Take a brand new car, right? It gets into a fender, denter, you fix it, it's okay. It gets into another one, fix it, it's okay. Maybe one or two more. How many does it take until that car is a lemon, right? (laughs) Yeah. And then there's another car that gets into one little fender dinner, and it never is the same ever again. It's a lemon instantly. So just like that, whether it's like a dent in your can, you drop a can of tuna, it's a dent, and you can't get it out. These little dents into our body, falling out of the crib when you're two, learning how to walk and falling on your face, banging your forehead into your mom's nose like we all bang right like falling when you're learning how to ski Um, my kid plays baseball and right now the kids pitch so the ball comes like 20 30 miles an hour and probably all 11 kids that day have a baseball implanted on their body somewhere (laughs) everyone gets hit and the parents are like you're tough get up keep going and I'm thinking oh man that guy's gonna show up in my office in 20 years with headaches (laughs) because these are the traumas that over the so it's your emotional state and your nutritional state at the time that you get a trauma that dictates if it becomes a chronic long-term block or not if you're nutritionally savvy and energetically healthy and happy it's not a long-term problem and you can use now that everybody and all the listeners know this you can do stuff at the second it happens to remediate it and kind of erase that trauma. You can use all of your Arnica products are amazing. Absolutely, yeah, our Relieve line. Arnica is fabulous for for muscle and and injury to the body. Yeah, so you should, everyone that play, whose kids play sports or play sports should have one of those in their gym bag or whatever, their soccer bag or their baseball bag, just in case. You just rub it on, it takes two seconds, and now at least energetically it's healed. And, you know, if the person was crying and it was more traumatic and they hated the kid that threw the ball at them, maybe there's a little bit more to do to unfold it. But those are the things that... By the time someone's 20, 30, or 40, when they show up in my office or they are searching for a holistic practitioner, those are the reasons for their problems. It's all of those over the course of the lifetime. So if you get hit by the baseball in the side of your leg, right on the large intestine or the gallbladder meridian, which are right there, maybe now your gallbladder meridian or your colon meridian are working 99% efficient instead of 100 and then you fall on your tailbone learning how to snowboard, and you also hit something that's related to the colon or the gallbladder, now it's working 98% efficiently. So it's like the compilation of your traumas and the location of them leads you to who you are today, right? Mm -hmm. And we eat and we avoid and we do or we sleep or we use certain oils or things to manage because we're we're like, well, this hurts, so let me do that. Or I can't play baseball anymore because I hurt that shoulder. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, people start to minimize what they do instead of heal and fix the problem. So that's kind of how the problems end up happening for people. And when you're holistic, you're looking at the whole entire thing. You're looking, I ask every question I have a lot 11 pages of paperwork with a picture of the body and you're supposed to mark off every one of your traumas that you remember men always have hundreds more than women because they play sports and they wrestle and they tackle and some of them and tattoos and piercings as well add right into that so Mm -hmm. if you have got a tattoo and then you were unhappy about it or you were drunk when you did it there's like 
extra stress in the body that happened when you did that. And now you have chemical toxicity, potentially a blockage in a meridian, and an emotional thing that's subconscious that now you have this like underlying stress hanging out in your body. So it's really important to address all of those. Yeah, my, my daughter had a uh, piercing and the piercing, she didn't use a, a gold. Um, she used a, used a, a stainless um, ring okay. um, on the piercing. And she went in and had her blood tested. And she had heavy metals in her blood. She was sick. She was having all these problems. And she's young. And she was having all these problems. And uh, it was all heavy metals just because of the piercing, because right. of the stainless in her body. Right. Well, at that point, the piercing is a little bit of a trauma. And if she had it in a certain place that's sensitive to the body, like softer tissue or, you know, where there's a lot of meridians, that's part of the problem. And then everyone has heavy metal toxicity, pretty much. I mean, we breathe it every single day, no matter where you are. You're breathing it in. It's in our food supply. They spray white flour with heavy metal poison. So... We, we all get it in, so that was a little bit like, that was like her cherry on top. It was like the one that right. put her over the edge. Yeah, yeah, Right, yeah. and so, yeah, so. Um, it's interesting, when you were talking, I was thinking about one of the um, gentlemen that does our manufacturing, um, and he's very buff. He's very fit, because he does heavy lifting and everything, and and he um, he's worked for us for 15 years, so I know him really well, and, and he um, always has this equilibrium issue. And in the equilibrium issue, he has been hospitalized. And so, um, racked up doll bills, d- medications. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, it all came out to be a simple vertebrae. And so now, out of alignment. Every, out of alignment. So, that's wh- as simple as it can get. You think, oh gosh, I'm dying, you know, I'm falling apart. But really, it could be just one simple thing that needs to be repaired in your body. Right, but a regular medical doctor would want to put you, the only power they have is antibiotics or cutting. Right. Yes. So they would want to put you on a drug that you have to have, right. and then if that doesn't work, they have to cut it out. Right. I mean, that's pretty much how they would do it. Yeah. Whereas a holistic practitioner, I have 350 different types of remedies. Yes. I mean, at least. Yes. And you know, and even adding in all your essential oils and all everything that you have, there's... You know, another large array of remedies that people can use. So whether people choose to swallow a pill or use an oil or soak in something or spray something or eat something, you can heal your body and have better nutrition with all of that. Naturally. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So just one last question here, and you kind of briefly touched on it, but does nutrition affect pain, and if so, in what way? Well... Um, the fact that you might eat junk food and that has inflammatory properties in it, you are definitely going to go right into creating potential pain. So whether pain or inflammation come first, um, they are definitely related. And all these traumas that people have over the course of their life that we've been talking about, if you don't get enough good nutrition in after the trauma, you might not heal it. And if it's not completely healed, over the course of time, you may end up having a bacteria or an infection or absorbing a toxicity into that area, which can then also relate to more pain and inflammation. So, I mean, the answer is definitely yes. Your nutrition definitely can trigger pain and inflammation in a couple of ways. So the one that I just described, um, the second one is by blocking, right? So if you eat enough things, if you eat enough soy, soy in a, soy is GMO food, so let's just not eat it to begin with anyway. But let's say you have some and you eat some soy. A small amount, it's an estrogen mimicker, which is a good thing because by binding to the places where estrogen would, you will actually excrete any excess estrogen. So you'll end up, by eating a little soy, you'll end up with less estrogen. But in high doses, you're now creating a different problem and potentially creating pain and inflammation. So there's the, it's always a balance, right? It's like anything and everything in moderation. I mean, that's that's the key. And then adjusting and having more of something when you need it. So your diet, um, even by eating something that one typically would have thought to be healthy, like soy, can end up creating pain and inflammation. And then um, blood sugar, which we haven't talked about at all, which is like one of the number one topics that I always talk about, 
when your blood sugar crashes, like if you haven't eaten for a long period of time, or you just exercised and you didn't eat yet after and you missed that window of opportunity, your blood sugar crashes. And when your blood sugar crashes, your cortisol goes through the roof. And when your cortisol is elevated, it makes you have inflammation. Cortisol gets converted into cortisone and people get hydrocortisone shots when they have pain. So a lot of that can be reduced by editing your cortisol and your which really comes back down to stress, um, but it could be because of simply your diet. You know, who does, we all know that sometimes people eat and they overeat and then they go, I'm not eating again till dinner or tomorrow. But that's not necessarily the right thing because now the, as that food digests and goes through your system, if you wait again till tomorrow, now your blood sugar is going to crash again and you're going to overeat or binge on high sugar types of things. And when I say high sugar, it doesn't even have to be real sugar. It could be fruit in high doses. Like tons of cantaloupe can raise your blood sugar. And if you don't eat protein, fat, or fiber to balance the, the macronutrient out, like because if you have carbs, so macronutrients are protein, fat, and fiber. Carbs. Protein, protein, fat, and carbs, and fiber. Okay, got it. So those are the macronutrients. So if you have too many carbs, your blood sugar is going to go through the roof. But if you eat some protein, fat, or fiber after, it won't dramatically crash. But when you drop below the line of neutral, that's when you are tired, cranky, starving, give me food now, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, <laughs> give me food or I'm going to kill you kind of feelings. Everyone's had that. So that can definitely trigger pain as well. And saliva is the best way to test your cortisol and I run those panels for people all the time and probably 50% of the people are within the healthy range 50% of the time so everyone's cortisol is just as erratic as their energy and their sleep patterns and just by working on improving the cortisol you can actually decrease pain and improve sleep and calmness and anxiety as well Excellent. That's great. Um, one other question. Um, parasites, don't they cause pain in the body, in the joints as well? Definitely. Toxins as well. They store in the joints. So um, a lot of times the joint, the traffic jams that I always refer to that are in your joints could be a toxin or a parasite. And the word parasite can be scary for people. You can't really see them most of the time. They're microscopic. Everyone has them. Everyone has parasites. Let's just be real. Everyone has parasites, <laughs> bacteria. Some people have more viruses than others and problematic ones and other people don't. They're all dormant. And everyone has... Um, infection, you know, bacterial infection, and everyone has heavy metal, chemical, or xeno, or hormone toxicity. We all have them because we live on this planet, so it's really just a matter of, that. that's why everyone's constantly detoxing, but I don't think constantly detoxing is the right idea. It's just a matter of balancing it out and just taking in good stuff, which will do its job. Your body is a smart machine. Right? You get a cast, you break something, you get a cast. When you take it off, you're like, oh, it's all better. Right? Mm -hmm. The body knows what, even in somebody that doesn't eat healthy, that will still heal most of the way at least. Right? Right. So if you're doing good nutrition and being healthy, your body is going to detox and purge just because. Right. So, you know, it's really just, that brings us back to just being important to have good nutrition. You know, another question is a lot of people think that drinking water detoxes the body. It flushes it out. And is it true that too much water is not good for you? Or is it not true? That's a challenging question to answer. Um, a lot of advocates for not drinking water when you eat would say that there is too much water happening. Um, and then some people are bloated, right? And people, so there's a case where people are like, I can't drink any more water. I'm just like swelling up. I believe that on average when, just because of the way I know the body and the way that I understand things, there's rarely too much water. I, I mean, I would have to, I would be hard pressed to say there's ever too much water in someone's body. Most of our nutrients get absorbed through water. A lot of parts of our body are hydrophilic. They, it loves water. And bacteria and, and water, H2O, right? So there's oxygen in there. More water makes us closer to having an oxygen-rich environment. 
and bacteria, viruses, and cancer cannot live in an oxygen-rich environment. And we all strive to be more alkaline, and being alkaline equals having more oxygen in our body. So I would have to say that, that we really probably never saturate ourselves with too much water. There is a little theory of if you drink water at your meal, you're diluting your nutrients. And, you know, again, individual variation and your today body, is it really true? Probably maybe sometimes, but on average, if you're thirsty and you're going to eat healthy, just do it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's more important to just do it because there's so many other things to waste your energy and time on. Just get water into your body. Get healthy food into your body. That's awesome. Is it in water? Um, I know I can't drink any water that they put sodium bicarbonate in, which is most of the water, bottled water on the market. Um, yeah, Dasani. Yeah, I, I can't. Just, you have to read your labels, people. Yeah. Audience. But what's a good water? Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is the type of filter I would put on my house if I owned a house. It's the type of water I drink. You can go to the water stores and get that. Um, I do like the pentahydrate. Um, the way that that water molecule, the way those water molecules are, it actually gets into your body and it doesn't slosh around. Um, there's a lot of waters I would never, ever, ever let anyone drink because when you're walking into the store, you usually see them outside and they're baking in the sun. Right. And to my, my rule is two minutes in the sun and it's toxic. Yeah. That's the xenotoxin. It's from plastic. So, um, you know, straight out of a filter is the healthiest, freshest, best water you can get. My refrigerator has a water filter on it. That water filter isn't as good as some other filters, but it comes right out. It wasn't sitting, and it wasn't soaking in the sun or in plastic, so that one's drinkable. I have a pitcher that I use from Seychelles, which is actually not too far from here. It looks like a Brita filter, mm -hmm. but it's better quality. The water from that tastes phenomenal, and it's just a little pitcher. Um, and I also have the five gallon things where I go to the store and I pick up a couple at a time and I put them in glass bottles also. It's part of my workout to carry like a five pound <laughs> bottle of a lot of water. Um, you must carry a lot of them. You're very fit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, they have been doing it for a long time. They, when the delivery waters, I always see them sitting on people's porches baking in the sun. So if you don't know where it was or I've seen it on trucks with the side open right so it's right. as the truck is driving so to me that's not water I want to drink on a regular basis you know so because your body is 60 or 70 percent water we need to have good clean water and xenotoxins is again one of those kind of intangible things you wouldn't know you had it unless someone told you you had it one way to think you might have it is when you start to get a double chin Toxins store in the parathyroid, which is under the chin. And even just in my child watching him when he was young, there are days where he would have a little bit more of a chin, and I would give him some chlorella and all the like the detox type of nutrients, and the next day it would be gone. It would be like flat across underneath his chin. So you can, but by the time you're 20, 30, 40, or 50, like it takes a little more than a day to get rid of it. <laughs> but a lot of people's double chins is just toxicity and pollution, you know, and dental fillings and injections in the mouth and you know all that there's so many other sources of it that if you don't have to get it from your water then at least you're going to get a good healthy benefit coming into your body yeah i wanted to say one more thing because i feel that it's an important point and it's something that we touched on a little bit um is that if i lined up 20 people right here all could look like 20 twins, right? Whatever that word would be. Mm -hmm. And they all came in with pain in their left hip. I might find 20 different reasons for that pain. One of it may be hormonal. One of it may be a toxin. One may be a parasite. One may be from a tailbone injury. One may be from a bacteria. So, you know, to try to treat and do and take what your friend does is not always the right nutrition for your body. And we're all fairly intuitive in nature, women a little bit more than men, sorry. <laughs> but um, you know, if it doesn't resonate with you, it's probably not the right thing for you, right? But um, So I just wanted to point out that we're all different. We've all had different genetics, we've had different traumas, different stress, we live in different environments, we work at different places. Like We all have different stuff so whatever your friend has that you have, 
it doesn't mean, you know, you can try and you can talk about it and look at it, but seek out what's right for your own unique body because it's probably something different than the person you know, you know. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> we were just talking yesterday about um, everybody goes online and uses Dr. Google. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and nutritionist Google. <laughs> yeah. <and> Mrs. Google. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It's, yeah. Um, there was a post somebody put on line recently that I just said yeah like hell yeah and it said don't think your google search can be the same as my nutrition degree yeah <laughs> and I was oh, like yeah. yep yeah yeah I mean so no it's true I mean you know you think about all the people that you see and all what you see in people you know um right you know you're and people are what I call barking up the wrong tree they're, t they're pointed in a direction because of Google or their friend, and they're going down, oh, I got to detox again. And detoxing and detoxing and detoxing is not the right thing for most people because most people don't have energy, and they have anxiety and stress or pain and inflammation, and detoxing is not going to help it get any better. It's only going to add fuel to the fire. Because of detoxing in nature, and also because most detox programs are incomplete as far as I'm concerned. If you want to detox, the part of your body that's like the oil change for the car that I call the assembly line, you have to address your liver, gallbladder, kidneys, intestines, and your lymph. And you have to also, because you're detoxing, take antioxidants to deal with any extra stress that comes through. I have never seen a detox program that has all of those except for the one I created. And actually, it was a team of nutritionists that created it when they worked for me back in the day. And um, we run it in the spring and the fall. Oh, because those are, you're not going to detox in the middle of your crazy fun running around summer. Right. And you're not going to detox in the middle of your holiday season. <laughs> right. And January, it's cold, and you need warm and comfort things, and you might just start getting into exercise. But it's good to do an actual detox, quote unquote, like from uh, like a program type of thing in the spring and the fall, because the rest of the year, your body is detoxing. And, you know, if you think about the topic, and I don't know if the listeners know, but like eating what's in season, you know, taking what's local and close to your home, like it, there's an energy to it that is that is what is true to your body. If you live on an island, you're going to eat more fruit all the time. But if you live somewhere where it's cold, eating a lot of fruit in the winter is definitely not going to work for your body on a regular basis because that's like something that you eat when you're warm. So it, there's a lot to say about what's going on in your environment. You know, 99% of how you feel comes from your environment. So really just listen to what's around you and do what makes sense for you. And you're already, because of that, your body innately detoxes when it needs to. There's a seasonal thing that happens. I see patterns in people all of the time. When there's a full moon or mercury retrograde or an eclipse or whatever you want to call it, that's week everyone's exhausted. Everyone. And then I have a different week where everyone's like, I feel so good this week. Or everyone, you know, there's, there's definitely a rhythm for the people that are working on being healthier and in touch with themselves. There's definitely something about the seasonal Absolutely. what's happening in your body so Absolutely. part of that is detoxing part of that is healing part of that is just being right yeah thank you so much julie was there any thank other you. questions Stephen? no that's actually it so uh julie if our audience is in los angeles where can they find you um my practice is actually in my home so i don't publish my address um, and I did used to have a wellness center, and it's much nicer in my home for everybody. So um, don't fear coming to my home. It's a, a full wellness center there. Um, so you just go to my website is the best way, is julieehealth.com. So there's three E's all together, but two next to each other. Um, and my phone number is 310-503-6336. And all of my social media is on my website and connected to it. You can find me for sure. Awesome. We really appreciate all the information. Well, and thank you for having me and having these fun talks. Yeah. And we hope to have you again soon. That sounds great. Thank you so much. And everybody have a healthy day. Yes. All thank right. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.